Have you guys ever forked somebody's house or TP'd somebody's house or like, uh, I think flamingoed or is that the term for it? I don't know. You guys have never done it. Ne nobody in here has done that before. Nick, you've done this? He's chuckling. I've done it. So I've forked and I've TP'd people's houses. And by people, I mean my youth pastor when I was in high school. Um, but here's the deal, okay. So do you know what TPing is? Rapping. Did you, you know what forking somebody's house is? I think forking is the easiest example. So we'll talk about that. So you just take plastic forks, you go to someone's yard, and you just stick them in the ground. So they come out the next morning. You do this in the middle of the night, by the way. It's super not shady at all. Um, and then they wake up, and they go to their car or whatever, and there's just like white plastic forks all over their yard. And it's a pain to clean up because it's a lot of forks. I guess you could just lawn mow it, but I don't know how that would go. Um, anyways, by myself, in the span of time that I have the courage to be out there sneaking in someone's lawn and, and doing that, I don't know how much I could do. Like, I'm not going to be very effective. Now, if I get all of you guys to go help me for Jody's yard uh, tomorrow night or Friday night or something, um, we could probably get it done in like two minutes, right? We could do some serious damage. We could even wrap them. We could probably do forks and toilet paper all over her house, and it would be so much more effective if we did it together, okay? And that's really what I want you guys to, to know. The more people you have, the more likely you are to have a bigger impact. So in this series called Together, that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the impact, the effect, um, just all the things that can happen when we as a church, as a student ministry, come together and work towards one thing. Um, when we show each other grace, when we refuse to act like we're better than each other, when we support each other and help each other through... Um, I guess, big decisions in life when we pray for each other um, and when we help people through struggles and help people through um, a sin that they're struggling with. When we do it together, the impact is great. And that's the whole point of tonight. Like, I'm giving you the main point right now. Together, we have a bigger impact. That's been the point of this series. As we close it off tonight, that's the point of tonight's message is together, we have a bigger impact. So an impact is kind of like what happens um, when like two cars collide, there's, there's an effect from that. Your insurance will go up, your bumper will be bent or destroyed, um, and your parents will be very, very uh, disappointed in you. Yeah, maybe you back out of a sonic sign. Did, Mike, did you hit a sonic sign? That's just not what okay, whatever. That sonic sign hit you, I know. Anyways, sometimes though, Impacts can be not that great, uh, but we're shooting for a pretty positive impact here in the life of our church. I think as people, we want to have an impact on the world. We want to have an impact on those around us. We want to impact those in our social circle um, or in our class. Um, but what about here at church? Because a lot of times I feel like it doesn't happen. I feel like a lot of times we miss having an impact um, for the gospel. We miss having an impact on the people in the room around us. And why does that happen? Why do you think that sometimes we come to youth group and there's just like no impact? Um, I think a big part of it is because a lot of times we come to youth group um, with a consumer mentality. We show up expecting and hoping for impact on ourselves and not to impact others. We hope that uh, you know, in worship or in a game or in conversation in small groups or through this devotion, like we just hope that we are impacted. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I hope that you feel some kind of impact and encouragement by the worship team. I hope that you come and receive and, and are encouraged. However, if that's your only goal coming in here every night, night to night, I think there's something wrong there. Um, I think there's something off. Have you guys heard of Yelp? I don't really use Yelp. I don't really trust other people's opinions. I'll just be straight up honest with you. My opinion is usually different than most, um, so I don't use it too often. However, I know how it works. 
you basically, you go eat somewhere and then you give a review. So you're like, this is the best restaurant in town. Wow, amazing service. Uh, or you're like, hey, this salsa tastes like burnt rubber, so don't go here. Um, and then so other people can go on and check it out and like, you know, oh, I'm not going to go there because Micah Jeffries said it tastes like burnt rubber. So we trust Micah and we just don't go there. Um, but I think a lot of times we can take like a Yelp approach. I don't know if I have a Yelp for student ministries or like Yelp for churches, like a review site. I don't know. Someone should look into that after youth group. Not now. Um, but I think we treat, like, we come to youth group with a Yelp mentality, like a mindset of like, okay, I'm here, uh, the worship team, they killed it, they did great, like eight out of 10. Uh, that speaker guy said right way too many times and that you know, just drove me insane, so four out of 10. Uh, snacks were good, we had, I don't know, the best lemonade ever, so you're like 10 of 10. And you just start giving these reviews. Um, and it's just part of that consumer mentality that we can have. And then that's always like, going to leave us disappointed because that's not the goal. My goal isn't to help you have a consumer mentality. My goal is to help you guys impact the world with the gospel. And so I think when we come to youth group like that, it's going to fall short. Um, we're going to miss the mark. Um, so but what if we did come to youth group with the mindset of like, hey, I want to impact the world. So when I come here tonight, I'm going to try and impact those around me and then take it outside these walls. What if, we, what if we all came to youth group like that? Like, Do we really believe that we could have an impact in our school systems, in our school district, in our classrooms at school? Do we really believe that just one person, maybe Ethan Edgerton, could have an impact on everybody in this room and change things for the better? Like, Do we, do we believe that? We might think, man, we're just like a group of like 40 people. I don't know how much of an impact we can have on the world for the gospel's sake. Um, but We've been in Acts for the past couple of weeks. You guys should know that by now. Um, and when we look at Acts, we see the beginning of the church. Um, and we see that it was actually just a group of small people that ended up leading the charge for world change. And we're sitting here talking about them today. Uh, they had an impact on the entire world, and they started out really small, um, just like us in here. So Jesus, he had just you know gone to the cross. He been resurrected, he'd come back. The Jews were like, oh yeah, he's going to overthrow the Roman government. It's great. He defeated death. He's going to defeat the Romans. Woo! And then he's like, ah, I'm out. I'm going back to heaven. I'll see you guys. It's on you. Um, actually, Acts 1.8 gives us a little snippet of that. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so that was his way of saying, I'm out. You guys are in charge of advancing the gospel. Uh, you're going to take it to all the known world. The Holy Spirit's going to help you. It's going to be great. I'll see you. So that's what they were left with, and that's what they did. They actually <laughs> believed those words, and they, they made it happen. And we looked at it a couple weeks ago just how they were sharing with one another and how daily the, the Lord was adding people to their numbers and people were coming to know Christ. Uh, but what's amazing, yes, they had the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. But these were people that are just regular average Joes like us. Some of you are pretty extraordinary, but most of us are pretty average. Just a joke, okay? You guys are all cool. Um, you guys are kind of dead right now. But it's just a bunch of average Joes. We have heroes, like, like we consider them heroes of faith. We got like Peter and Paul and like some big name guys up in there. But the rest were all pretty just like, Guys, you never really heard of. And so I want to go over a couple examples of that where we see regular people, non-famous, just everyday Christians doing some amazing things um, and doing them as they come together. So we're going to be in Acts 6, 1 through 7. I'm not going to put it on the screen because it's a lot of verses and I'm just going to read it. So if you guys have your Bibles and you have incredible eyesight or you want to use your phones, go for it. So this is Acts 6, 1 through 7. It says, But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called a meeting of all the believers, and they said, We apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are all well-respected and full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility then we apostles can spend our time in prayer teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea, and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Philip, uh, Procurius, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. 
Um, and these seven were presented to the apostles, who prayed for them as they laid hands on them. So God's message continued to spread, and the number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted, converted too. So if you guys could track with me when I read those names, um, did you recognize all of those names? Have you heard of, well, you probably heard of Stephen. Um, I just lost the page. Where are they at? But have you heard of Timon or Ny- Nicanor or Procurius? Like, I haven't heard of those guys. Or Parmenas, which sounds like Parmesan cheese, which is disgusting. Um, just a bunch of no-name guys. Guys that, you know, we don't sit here and talk about. It's like, wow, remember when uh, Procurius did that amazing thing? Like, we don't talk about that. Just a regular dude. But what did he do? He led this amazing... Hey, guys. Shh. Thanks. He led this amazing thing. Um, to help advance the gospel because the apostles were like, hey, we need to teach, so we need other people to step up and, and serve in this ministry role so that the gospel can continue to be advanced while we're over here teaching, all right? And so these people stepped up, and together they were able to, able to accomplish this um, and bring peace to the body of Christ, which is huge because they were on the verge of a split, basically. But because people stepped up and worked together, they are able to dissolve the tension um, and take care of the widows, which is huge. Um, so those are a bunch of no-name guys, but hey, girls, it's not just guys that we're, we're working together to advance the gospel. Um, I'm going to read Acts 9.36. Um, so there was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which isn't a, the best name, but it's better in Greek. It's Dorcas. So <laughs> there was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. Um, she was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. So you feel bad for laughing now, don't you? Um, so there's this lady, and there's other examples, but that's just one of this woman who's stepping up and serving, always doing kind things for others. She's part of that body of believers working together, um, and all were involved, and it's incredible. And one more example from Acts 17, verse 6. It says, not finding them there, they dragged out Jason and some of the other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted, and now here they are disturbing our city too. Have you guys ever heard of Jason in the Bible before? I was like, what? There's a guy named Jason in the Bible? Good name, but it just doesn't sound very biblical. But it is. It's here in the Bible. Um, But it's just a regular guy helping to advance the kingdom. Um, And it says the religious leaders were like, they're causing troubles and disturbing our city. Those troubles were advancing the gospel. The trouble was preaching. The trouble was healing people in Jesus' name. So when they say troubles, those insults were actually huge compliments um, they're basically saying, hey, there's something different about these troublemakers, and they're, they're doing things that I'm not comfortable with, uh, which was good because it, it was the gospel being advanced. Um, there are men, women, there's educated people, uneducated people, famous teachers, and then no-name workers all banding together to be known as these troublemakers, the way as they became to be known. Um, and they took the gospel to the ends of the earth, and they lived out exactly what Jesus told them in Acts 1.8. And here we are talking about it today because a small group of people believed that together and with the power of the Holy Spirit that they could together have a bigger impact. So that's that's where it brings me to this question for us in here tonight. So if you decided to show up at Elevate or to Sunday School um, to make an impact, not just to be impacted, what would you do? If your mindset was to flip and be like, hey, I want to impact the people in this room, and in doing that, have an impact on the gospel, on the whole world with the gospel. What would you do? It might be something that you did on your own time outside of church, by yourself. That's great. You're probably going to be effective in that. Um, but what if you also did something together? What if you got three or four of your friends to join you in that? What if you brainstormed an idea together and came up with a way to impact the people in the room? What if you came up with a way to, to impact the people at your school? So that's what I want you to do. I want you to decide one thing you can do together as a small group that can make an impact. So that's going to be something we're going to focus on in our small groups. Choose something together um, as a small group to do to have an impact on the people in this room or the people um, at your schools or the people outside these walls but within our church, like the adult Sunday school classes. It could be anything. But I just want you guys to decide on something together and then do it together. It's great to get here and talk and me to encourage you guys and put this in front of you and be like, yeah, that's good. We should do that. Okay, so let's do it, right? So that's the goal tonight. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pray. 
and then we're going to go to small groups, all right? Father, I just want to thank you um, for the example that we get from Scripture. Lord, we spent the last couple of weeks in Acts, and God, I pray that we could band together and, and lift each other up and work together and, and uh, make up for each other's differences and work for the sake of your gospel, Lord. I pray that your spirit would uh, bind us together in unity and in love, Lord. Um, I pray that you would give us forgiveness and, and grace for each other. Uh, Lord, I know that we can probably get on each other's nerves at times, but I pray that you would just use your spirit um, to help us look over those things and, and reach out in love and work um, to advance the gospel, Lord, both in this room, both in um, the walls outside of this room, and then Lord, to the ends of the earth, like, like your, word, your word says. We pray for a good time of discussion, a time of encouragement, Lord, in our small groups. We love you so much, and in your name we pray these things. Amen.